Sometimes showing what you're talking about um, is uh, imperative to the whole story. What's happening guys, Dan Debenham here. Yes, today we're talking about B-roll and about how to achieve uh, a better look in B-roll. Um, and sometimes there just isn't the equipment available. There isn't the camera track, dollies, um, the cranes, the gimbals, all that good stuff that you would normally want to use to achieve an amazing shot in uh, you know, a motorized uh, robotic arm, etc., etc. You just haven't got all that. Sometimes it's just down to you holding a camera. That may be uh, a factor of budget, or it could well be just that you are looking for that handheld sort of look to your project. But invariably, um, camera movements with handheld, when they're handheld, uh, are quite shaky or off center, or, or they're not quite what you expected them to be once you've done them. No matter how many times you try and do that movement, it's different each and in, in, in individual time. It's slightly different because you know you can't repeat the same movement over and over and over again exactly the same. Um, so today we're going to show you, or I'm going to show you, behind the edit of what I would do uh, or what I do do in order to sort of manipulate my handheld shots to look a little bit more like they are what the viewer would expect to see. To do that, I'm going to enlist the help of Kiefer Sutherland, uh, not the real one. It's this guy, um, this is Kiefer Sutherland from Lost Boys with his noodles. And uh, what we're gonna do is he's gonna star in a little sequence or a little scene for me, um, just so that we can show you what we would do. So let's jump into Premiere Pro with our clip. It's already been filmed and let's see how I do it. So we're into Premiere Pro and we've got our scene in place and now what we need to do is start to manipulate it. So first things first to do is we need to scrub through it and just see roughly what it is that we're gonna be trying to alter. So I'm gonna give this a play, and I can already see a couple of things that I don't like. It's a bit janky, and it's not level, and it, we sort of, we're sort of in a position where it needs a bit, it needs a bit of finessing to this. So, first things first, well, let's, let's start with this then, start with this clip. We've got two clips, we've got this, and we've got just a straight truck in, and these are just basically if we need to use a different clip uh, or we need to tack something onto the end of it in this case I'm not sure we will so let's just have a look and see what we can do so one of the tricks we can do is we can slow the footage down um, and that gives it a little bit more of a cinematic appeal it gives it a bit more uh, of what people are expecting from a cinematic or a b-roll sequence where it's slightly slower uh, and slowing it down also that also smooths out any imperfections or as much of the imperfections as it can um, in the movement that you've made when you've done it at normal everyday speed. So first things first, I'm going to go here, right click on it, speed and duration, and I'm going to make it 40% of full speed, which is going to slow it down, uh, and that's going to just take away some of the, the, the sort of rumbling of the handheld, some of the jankiness of it, uh, and, and it's going to just make it already look a little bit better than it was before. So round about, I'd say round about here, um, it wants to sort of slow down. So we're going to add a bit of speed into this. So let's go up to speed here and we're going to add it, make that 200 and we're just going to reduce that. So now we've got this, where are we at now? Sort of two, 19, 19 frames. So just under a second's worth of fast motion drops straight into uh, slow motion. So we're going to get the brakes at around 19 frames. That's cool. Okay, that's okay. We're happy with that. That's no worries. We're quite, we're quite happy with that. Brilliant. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll add a square onto the screen. So let's just drag a square on. Just to add that little bit more to the uh, the whole sequence itself, you could, in effect, film this in a different format, uh, a wider format. Um, you know, like a 235 or something, uh, and then just transplant it straight into your sequence. But if you haven't done that, what we can do is we can just add bars at the top and bottom, uh, and that just differentiates this sequence 
from the other sequences that you've got going off like this like this piece of camera that we're doing now is different so that will be full screen um, and then the cinematic stuff the b-roll stuff that we've got to show what's going off we can put bars top and bottom of that to differentiate what that is uh, and give the viewer the opinion that this was filmed at a different point or a different time uh, in a different format and it's much more sort of it's larger than it actually is in terms of the the, the width of the the um, the sequence itself. We're going to make that sort of the same length as our clip, and then we're going to add a uh, opacity mask to it. So obviously we're coming down to masks, and then we're adding an opacity mask, I'm grabbing these two handles, and just dragging them out like so, because I want it to be the full width of the um, scene. We're going to take off the we're going to take off the feather so now it's a flat black no problems and we're going to invert it as well so that it is now uh, the opposite way around to what it should be and then we're going to go to the mask expansion and we're going to expand this out to around about here okay so now that we've got that set we're all good next thing we can do and the reason we've done that is so that we can now manipulate this with these fake bars on now, in essence, if you've shot it on a different in a different format, so you've shot it 235 or whatever, uh, or 133, you're going to end up uh, it's going to be widescreen anyway, uh, and so that's going to make this job slightly different, um, and it's going to you, you know you, you're going to do it without those black bars. You don't need to do it with these black bars. I haven't shot it in this, so I'm adding them in to make it look a little bit more like it was. It differentiates it from the rest of the fake video that we've already shot that's not got these on hear me out here so obviously it's not straight the horizon isn't straight so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to straighten that out uh, just to just because I'm not happy with the fact that it's slightly a, a, an odd angle as I move across um, the little Kiefer Sutherland that we've got going off um, I just want to straighten that out so it just needs to look a little bit more a little bit more like it's been a controlled shot rather than a handheld shot so next thing to do is to get a guide in because we know that this scene is not quite straight we can see from the beginning it doesn't look too bad actually because obviously the angle we're at is going to look slightly janky and this table's a, a different place to this uh, window ledge so it's going to be slightly off so we're going to ignore the table what we're looking at is this guy Kiefer we're looking at the lamp and we're looking at the um, the windowsill and as you can see when I noticed when we got to the end, you can see how, how out of line that is, which means he's also out of line. So it looks like everybody's we're almost on a sinking ship. So we're going to fix that. And the way to fix that is we're going to go to Guides, which is this little uh, Show Guides icon here. If you haven't got it, go to your Plus Editor button, uh, which is here. Look for this guy, drag it on, and then you're all good to go. So once it's on and it's all done and dusted, we're going to click. Uh, let's get the... Icon. We're going to click this icon here. We're going to click the actual scene itself. We're going to go to view, and then we're going to go to add guide. Don't worry about any of this business. Uh, just make sure it's selected to horizontal and not vertical, and then click OK. And then we end up with a guide that, if you hover over, you get a little like sort of I can move you about line. So what we're going to do is we're going to just jump to the end of the scene and go back one frame. Uh, and then we're going to position this guide so that the guide runs through this corner because that's the corner we're going to use to move everything up so effectively it's like a, a triangle it's going to start here and it goes out into the width here so it's very pointed here and it's the widest point over here so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the beginning of the scene make sure our clips selected and not the black bar so we've got our clip selected then we're going to go to the rotation and we're going to add a keyframe in. So let's undo that keyframe and make sure we're at the beginning of this scene. We are, yes, and we're going to add a keyframe in, like so. We're then going to scoot all the way to the end, go back one frame, add a keyframe in. Now we need to straighten this up, so we're going to start, I, I like to start with like two degrees. And I just like to see what two degrees does to it. So I reckon it's probably two point two point five, maybe two point three. So I think it's two point three degrees. 
and in essence what's going to happen is is as you can see if you watch this figure here you'll see it moving down because as I get further towards the front of the clip towards the beginning you can see it goes back to zero so what he's doing now is Premiere Pro is keeping that scene basically set to level which is pretty cool um, and effectively what we're going to do next is we're going to get our Kiefer Sutherland guy you can see how it's sort of janked it here so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to come back to the beginning of our scene so let's go back to the beginning of our scene and we're going to need to put a scale icon icon in a keyframe in we're going to go across to the end of our scene and we're going to put another scale keyframe in so first keyframe what we're going to do is we're going to say this wants to be 120 uh, and then this keyframe I'm going to make it 130 now there's a reason for that uh, a very good reason for that actually and that is that I'm going to use this to try and keep uh, Kiefer slightly into the center of the frame so what we can do is come back to the beginning of the keyframe again we're going to go to position we're going to hit a keyframe there back to the end and then we're going to hit keyframe on there again and what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we adjust this so that Keitha is more in frame and more in the center like so so what happens is is we've got leveling we've got zooming and we've got moving all at the same time along with scale so the scales coming up the movements coming up and Keitha is coming up effectively so what we've ended up with is we've ended up with a shot that looks like this. Now we also need to make sure that the beginning of this keyframe, what's the scale on the beginning of this keyframe? 120. So we need to click on this one here and we're just going to do a standard no keyframe. We're going to boost it to 120. Uh, and that means that it matches the next frame on. So it doesn't, uh, it doesn't look odd like we've jumped massively. Now we can add that next that next frame in and we can just extend this out slightly and then we can come to here and we can say ah, okay what's going off with this we can still use the same guide and we can see that it's still slightly out so what we could do is we could just go to the front of this one here uh, add a rotation keyframe go to the back go back one frame obviously so we can see it uh, and we can go to there and then what we can do is we can manually just drag this about like so so we get it sort of straight at the end now you can see it's it's straight to the to us but not to that that window there so we want we need to we need to make a decision on what it is that we want to be straight so in essence in this situation I would say probably the windowsill wants to be straight because that's the thing that is not quite right and then from here obviously you can see it's still not right there so we'll go back to this keyframe and we'll straighten it out we'll straighten the windowsill out so that everything looks kind of straight there and then effectively what happens is is you see it coming in like so what we can do now is we can just go and we can just make this entire thing sort of 50% let's go with 50% rather than 40 just to mix things up slightly and we also need to zoom it in but in this case what we can do is we can just zoom it in 110% and we just do it the whole scene 110% for now so we can see what we're doing okay and then what we can do is we can come back we can go to position go across add another keyframe in and then once we get to the end we'll drop him up a little bit and we'll bring him across slightly ever so slightly what I'm going to do also is I'm going to truck that across a little bit like that so that we've got everything running the same and then in essence what happens is this so as you can see it just tidies things up it just gives that little bit more to the viewer uh, and it just 
uh, allows you to sort of manipulate your edit to be where you want it to be and to see what you want to see rather than just a straight handheld out of the camera, nothing else I can do with it, that's just what we're stuck with kind of situation. It's brilliant, it's a great idea to do, it does take a little bit more time but then again that's why we're here, that's what we're doing, um, we're not just shoving things out of a camera onto an edit and then off we go, we have to sort of tell a story and uh, because of that, that involves us tweaking and manipulating and massaging these things into place. So with that, I hope that you did find this useful and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.